Hey coffee friends, I hear your horse is going crazy. Sounds like a camp's being attacked. Let's go paint it. Let's go. <laughs> hey friends, whether you like coffee, horses, or you're just ready for an adventure, you've come to a really exciting episode. While I talk, I'm gonna take you to Astique National Park in Maryland. I know this is a long video, but I kept all the good parts that I wanna share with you. In today's video, I'll be trying my first in plain air. This is a 19th century art form about painting outside in the moment. And there's no better place to try this than here. This island is home to over 75 horses, white-tailed deer, red foxes, and even bottle-nosed dolphins. But you do have to remember, these animals are wild and the horses run the land here. On the first day I arrived, I drove around for a while looking for a perfect spot to paint. I ended up setting up at the entrance right before the state park. This was a very busy intersection and the park ranger reminded me not to block the road. Listen to this. Hey coffee friends. Hey coffee friends, welcome back to another painting. All right, I got the thumbs up from the park ranger. We are live at another painting with coffee. I ended up following the horses into the sunset, but they never stood still long enough to paint. The sun was setting and I was freezing. I called it a night. I would be back. Oh, way too cold. I'm done. Day two. Now this was a brutal second attempt at in plain air, but some amazing things happened, and I can't wait to show you. When I first arrived, the wind was crazy. I'll save your ears, all it sounds like is static. But I can thank the wind for one thing. It was so windy, the horses were actually hiding behind the trees from it. Normally, you have to stand 40 feet back from the wild horses, but the bridge allowed us to get super close and be safe at the same time. I was stoked. I was just beginning to set up to paint when an older lady approached me and asked me what I was doing. It's moments like this in life that are so valuable. Human connection. She was also an artist. We talked about watercolor, oil paints, and of course, coffee. We were cracking up every time a horse did its business towards the camera. Our conversations about art and these horses, I'll always remember. The lesson here was be present and be friendly. You never know who you're gonna meet. She headed off to grab lunch and I started to paint. The horses kept moving and the wind was even stronger now. I mixed up some coffee to paint with, but the wind blew it everywhere. I had the genius idea to tape my drawing board to the railing to give me an extra hand. Suddenly, the wind picks up, 
flips my board over, slides across the boardwalk, plop, into the bay. I could not believe it. I felt defeated again. Headed to the car, put my gear away, and headed back to the scene because I knew I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I left it and littered. Laying on the boardwalk, I stretched a tripod all the way out and used it as a claw to push my painting closer to land. I headed down the stairs, crawled under the boardwalk in the marsh, and got it. Success. Now the next thing I've never witnessed in my life. I got back in the car, more determined than ever. They were hanging in the campsite area, and they were full of energy. I've never seen them so loud and vocal to each other. I ended up playing Chinese fire drill every time they came near me. It was scary. My hands were shaking, heart was pumping, and blood was flowing. I mixed some coffee and just started. I had to keep hopping in the car every time they came close. It was wild. Oh, oh, so close to being done. I just had to add the horse. <laughs> Not overly pleased with my first in plain air, but I called it a night and I knew I'd give this another shot. Day three, horse attacks, two successful paintings, and a new technique I learned. I love it. You will too, stay tuned. I arrived at Aztec around noon, and the horses were just grazing in the campsite area once again. I set up and set an intro. Check this out. Be sure to maintain the 40 feet of distance. <laughs> and then I got started. But the horses weren't going to be kind off the bat. I seriously felt like they woke up the second my pencil hit the paper. It was game time. I had to keep picking up my camera on the tripod, my easel, and my backpack. Stop walking. 
I have to admit though, I didn't mind too much. I really enjoyed watching them. Of course, I would witness people not being very smart and getting way too close. Like these ladies who act like they were there first. These are wild horses, people. They bite and they kick, trust me. I've seen it, I see it every summer. Finally, they stopped in this really cool campsite with an open clearing. I was on the highest part of the beach and it made for a really cool perspective. They stayed still long enough for me to get a complete sketch and reference pictures. This piece ends up being my favorite, so please stick around to the end to see how it turns out. But you wouldn't believe it, I suddenly hear screaming, I had to grab my stuff and run down the beach. Hey coffee friends, I hear your horse is going crazy, sounds like a camp's being attacked, let's go paint it, let's go. I back up. It's a four hundred dollar fine. It's a, it's a four hundred dollar fine. Them? Yeah, yep. And they take it super serious. You want to give them forty feet, is what they say. Oh. This next part, you'll be shaking your head. They're not giving them forty feet. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe a grown adult response? They're not giving them forty feet. Looks like I found a real Karen. After that, they ended up leaving. I then headed around the back of the ransacked campsite and set up on top of a picnic table. It was perfect. Here goes nothing. Meanwhile, the horses were going through bags, coolers, and their tent. I did feel bad. At one point, the horse was even chewing on the guy's cell phone and he runs over to pull it out of its mouth. The whole experience was crazy. Someone's camp's getting destroyed and I'm over here painting it. I finished it within 20 to 30 minutes and I was very pleased. Now, back to my favorite piece. You are going to love it. I headed home with a smile on my face, exhausted, and ready to sit at my desk and finish the third in plain air. Not technically in plain air, because I didn't finish it outside in the moment, but it's the best I could do. The sun was going down. I popped up a reference photo, and I'll tell you exactly how I did this one. I cleaned up some of my pencil lines, grabbed the coffee, the jars, paper towel, brushes, and boiling water. I fill the cups with equal amount of coffee. When it comes to the water to coffee ratio, I divide it by thirds. One full, one half, and one with just a third. Then you should always test the brews so you're happy with the colors. I decided to grab a fourth cup and put coffee in it with only a few drops of water so it was super dark. I decided to paint the center horse first because this will determine the shades of coffee for the rest of the piece. I made the back legs the darkest because of shadows. The tail and mane were gold, so I used the lightest coffee cup I could. Next, the back horse has a brown head and back area, and the horse in front is a darker brown. Since the rinse cup was now mixed with coffee, it made a perfect light tone for sand. Remember, with watercolor, you can always go darker, but you can't go lighter. I made it darker for the shadows and mounds of sand, but the back was all wooded, so I colored it in.
The old rusty fire pit, I painted the darkest shade. I let it all dry for a few minutes so the colors wouldn't run. Then I loosely created lines that symbolized the brush and the vegetation that was around the horses. A dab of dark color for its eye and nostril. Next, we have to add the grate on the fire pit. I carefully painted the white part on the back horse the lightest color I could create. It's tricky when you're only using coffee. I made the back vegetation and trees a super muted brown so that it feels further away and not in focus. I couldn't forget to add the signature brown dot on the horse's back leg. Next, I sign it, but I'm not done yet. I told you there's a surprise. I brought back a little Astic sand, hoping that my idea might work. I painted the foreground a shade darker and waited about three minutes. You need the surface area to be somewhat dry, but not completely. Sprinkle some on and the coffee will adhere to it and hold it. How cool. A little bit of Astique will always be on this piece. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. I hope you had fun and learned something. If not, I hope I made you laugh from all the horses pooping. This was a great experience and you should try painting in plain air. I'm glad I did. And a bonus was meeting really cool strangers like the lady I met on day two. I also met a phenomenal photographer named Dan Sell while I was out painting on the third day. Our conversations about camera, art, and life will stick with me for a very long time. I'll put a link to his photography down in the description below. Do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below if you've ever been to Astique Island National Park. And as always, let's get roasted. Mm-hmm. Ooh.